on to our next presentation uh, by Mr. Eliot Christian uh, from National Oceanic and Admos uh, Atmospheric Administration, CAP Common Alerting Protocol, the International Standard for Emergency Warning. No? No. So you need to use this. Okay. One. Yeah. Good. You're working? Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah, it's oh. working. You can I'd rather use this. that. Okay. So, common alerting protocol, the international standard that enables emergency warnings to leverage modern information and communications technology. That includes the internet wireless and landline phones, satellite broadcasts, smartphone apps, digital highway signs, digital television and digital radio, just about any kind of digital communications and devices. I'll explain how that is. Let's start by noting online media is replacing mass media. Much of today's alerting infrastructure assumes that mass media, such as broadcast radio and television, is the best way to disseminate emergency alerts to a large percentage of people in harm's way. Many television stations insert crawl text with the warning message, and radio stations insert a recording. This public-private collaborative effort has required decades to implement and consumes huge ongoing investments in specialized technology. Yet all of that mass media approach does nothing to reach users on online media. People are missing out on mass media emergency alerts as they substitute online media for broadcast radio and television. Google has a solution. They leverage CAP to get emergency alerts to people online using Google tools. Here we see Google showing an official warning of a storm surge in Canada. Below it, we see a tornado warning from the U.S. National Weather Service overriding advertisements on web pages for users in the alerting area. Also, digital billboards carry CAP alerts in the United States, and that's actually very smart from an advertising strategy perspective. So we see digital media companies are using their own resources to help get warnings out. It's an amazing surge of innovation around emergency alerting, and it's happening because of the CAP standard. Before CAP, emergency messages were plain, unstructured text, a press release, or a bulletin. CAP gave us a structured message containing a mixture of data and text. The CAP message communicates the key facts about any kind of an emergency. What is the emergency? Where is the affected area? How soon do we need to act? How bad will it be? How certain are the experts? CAP is designed for any media to communicate information about any kind of hazard situation. So we could say CAP is a standard business form for the business of emergency alerting. In paper, that kind of form could be carried on a clipboard. So everyone involved in the emergency has this one additional form. It doesn't have everything you need to know. It's got a few key facts, but everyone needs those few key facts. Now let's look at the content of that form, an actual CAP message. This is the CAP message with its XML tags. The CAP message has the sender name, National Weather Service, Sacramento, California. 
The headline is severe thunderstorm warning. In the description, we see this storm is likely to have hail, intense rain, strong damaging winds. And the instruction says, take cover in a substantial shelter until the storm passes. Notice the alerting area. For human readers, the area is described in text. But for automated processing, the area is given with the latitude longitude points of a polygon. That's the crucial feature of CAP messages. CAP is encoded with XML so that information and data are in the same message. CAP messages contain information as text values for human readers. We saw the area description, the headline, the instruction. But CAP messages contain data those coded values that are essential for automated processing, for translation, and much more. For example, the relative priority of this alert is given with three coded values. Urgency, what's the time frame for responsive action? Severity, what's the level of threat to life or property? Certainty, What's the probability that it will occur? And in fact, there's already a common practice for high priority alerts, sometimes called red alerts. Urgency, severity, and certainty are all set at the top two levels. And what does that mean? People must act within the next hour. The situation is life-threatening, and we're at least 50% certain. So with that background, let me highlight a few of the benefits of CAP. Alerting authorities that do not have CAP still struggle with many separate methods by which they send out alerts. This includes making phone calls, sending faxes, sending emails, posting to a web page, posting to Facebook, to posting to Twitter. All of those activities consume valuable time, distracting from the mission of composing accurate and actionable alerts. With CAP, a simple, single message disseminates quickly over multiple alerting methods. Emergency managers must assimilate information of many kinds and from many different sources at scales ranging from local to national and on up. And alerts are a big part of that, of course. Without CAP, this variety of alerts is really difficult to get, to use, to share, because they're communicated in so many media and formats. Information gathering and analysis is much easier with CAP alerts, and here we see CAP alerts displayed on a map interface. This supports the emergency management function called shared situational awareness or maintaining a common operating picture. Trust. Trust in an alerting system is eroded when people get alerts not intended for them. This happens really often with mass media and with systems based on plain text. With CAP, the alerting area is precisely defined with that polygon or circle in addition to the textual area description. Many people in harm's way are underserved with current public alerting because they are blind, they are deaf, they are cognitively impaired, or they do not understand the language. Like me here in Geneva, they don't understand the language being used in the alert. These issues are addressed by simply exploiting the data features of CAP with some automated translation. Now, some types of hazard occur so suddenly that seconds, seconds can mean the difference between timely, life-saving alerts 
and alerts that arrived too late. Examples, earthquakes, tornadoes, tsunami, flash floods, volcanoes, landslides, avalanche, terrorism. Cap alerts can be posted immediately through an online facility and that immediately disseminates through many media, some of which do arrive within a second or two. Also, cap messages are digital. And that means the action is not only by people, that action can be by devices, sirens, highway signs, train controls, all these automated mechanisms that help save lives. Now, a cap alert is a kind of news story, and you might be thinking about, yeah, fake news. CAP enabled alerting at global scale takes advantage that all countries have official alerting authority. For the United States, this is the range of authorities issuing CAP alerts. Now, different countries have different policies on what it takes to be nationally authorized, but it is agreed that if official sources should be known internationally. So, the International Register of Alerting Authorities is a referral service. This is the home page, and we can select one alerting authority, NOAA's National Weather Service, and we see its CAP feed URL. Following that, here are the CAP alerts disseminated, more than 3,000 of them, and those are aggregated into one feed as well. Now I want to talk about uptake. At global scale, CAP is urged by the World Meteorological Organization, commercial firms such as AccuWeather, the Weather Company, the International Telecommunication Union promotes CAP and its guidance for national emergency telecommunications plans. International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Society promotes CAP. It's key to their hazards app. CAP underlies Google Public Alerts, so if anyone in harm's way using Google Search, Google Maps, and so on. Today, 50% of the world's people live in nations that already have CAP. A further 25%, mostly India, are actively implementing CAP should be up this year. Some countries have very many CAP sources. Here's the United States federal CAP system with over 1,300 CAP alert sources. Obviously, many, not only all 50 states, counties, cities, I don't know how many CAP systems are at city level. We see Microsoft and IBM both sell CAP-enabled products. CAP uptake among least developed countries, half the uptake among all countries. That's a gross injustice. Those are the most vulnerable countries. We had to do everything we can to help them implement CAP. And that's simply let them know it's there. It's really easy to implement CAP. And let me show you just how easy that is. Here we have a cloud-based tool for creating and publishing CAP alerts. Any alerting authority can implement CAP with just this free tool. There's nothing to install. The tool just requires a web browser, Anybody can use it right now as guest. Feel free to go online. But as a guest, you can't publish their alerts. For that, we need the alerting authority to tell us who is authorized. National Disaster Management Authority of Afghanistan is using it now to create CAP alerts and their own CAP alert feed. Whenever they put out a new alert, that alert's disseminated by all subscribers, all manner of local, national, and global subscribers, sister agencies news media, mobile networks, Red Cross, Red Crescent, AccuWeather, Google, and so on. Right now it's initialized for 140 alerting authorities. Let me know if your alerting authority and your language needs to be added. I'd be glad to do that. One of the subscribers is the Global Scale Alert Hub. Again, freeware, open source. This is a screenshot of the website. We are aggregating alerts across the entire world, feeding them back so that your community can get just the alerts that you care about no matter where they're issued. 
Those were my key points. At this link, you can find much more about CAP. That's my email address. Feel free to contact me. And I see I have one minute left. So if all of you could ask your question at the same time, we can parallel. No. Any questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much.